Hello, everyone. I miss you all and uh, wish I was with you and looking forward to getting to be with you again. Hope everything's going well, praying for you often and uh, love you and God bless you. And I want to just take a little bit of time and get into the word of God because man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So I'm going to take Psalms uh, 19 today. And, um, and so I'm gonna, let me just pray. Father, thank you for your precious word. I thank you for your people. I ask in Jesus' name, open your word, Lord, and feed your flock. Let's give me wisdom and insight and understanding and the ability to make your words known. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going I'm to read some and then I'll talk after I read for a while. I'm going to read Psalms chapter 19 starting in verse uh, 1 just because I love this psalm. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the ends to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from the end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. There is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent from great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer." What awesome, awesome words. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. God is preaching a message through creation all day long, every day. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the waters of life freely. I worked in the aircraft industry for 20 years and, and I worked with engineers quite often. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I had my part to do, they had their part to do. I never saw an engineer, um, someone assigned a project, just go sit at your desk and just do whatever you want, just come up with something. They always assigned them a specific task and they designed sp specific pieces and parts and objects. In a 747, there are a million parts. Every part has a part number. Every part has a specification. Every part was, was made to be used in a specific or in, in, in specific places. And, uh, and they were made out of specific elements. You don't just make anything. You don't just make stuff out of anything. I remember when they were first designing the, uh, the stowage bins for, for uh, the, the aircraft. And they were um, starting to use um, different kinds of plastics. You don't just use any plastic in there. People will die. If you had a fire, they would die from the fumes from the plastic if you didn't use the right stuff. And so, so everything is designed. You are designed specifically. The heavens declare. There's a designer. They declare the glory of God. Look into the heavens. They're, they're making a statement all day long. There is a creator. There is one who is above it all. It's all made with, with intent and purpose, purpose. You look at the earth and oh my goodness, we have four seasons. We got cycles that go on. You see, we, you know what? We don't have any more water today than when, we, when, the first was, when the world was first created. And we use water all day long, every day. And the and and the, the rivers run all day long, every day, and they don't run out of water. 
You know, I mean, you look at the Mississippi, go to, to Niagara Falls. How, how does that, that many uh, gallons of water pour over that falls all day long, every day? You no, know, it didn't run out of water. Who did that? Who created it like that? The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. God did it. God made all of it. And God deserves all of our praise and all of our glory. God is awesome. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There's people who've wanted to take the Bible and stamp it out, take it away, get it away. And uh, I can't remember the, the name of one of the... Of the um, um, sages, maybe he wasn't a sage, but he was one of the most intelligent men in the, in the last generation. And he tried to take the Bible away and get it all away. You know what happened with his house whenever he got all done? His house is where they store Bibles and sell Bibles from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who gets the last word? Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You're, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. God, God made us and God made us for his pleasure. And he made, he created everything for his pleasure. And our job is bring pleasure, bring glory to God. You know, when we do that, we find ourselves being elevated. We find ourselves being lifted up. You turn against God and oh my goodness, you turn against God to your own hurt and to your own demise. You damage yourself beyond any beyond beyond help if if you know if you continue on in, in foolishness and this is what I want to what I plan to speak on but I'm just letting it rip okay all right so he says um, day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard Isn't I don't care where you go I don't care where you go on the face of the whole earth yeah, I don't care which continent you go to, you can see the hand of God and the handiwork of God. And, and, and the message goes out from morning to evening, throughout the night and back again in the morning. There's a creator. The line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. <clears throat> the scripture, Jesus said, having ears, they hear not. Listen, creation is talking. Can you hear? God wants us to be able to, to see. He said, having eyes they see not, and having ears they hear not, neither do they understand, unless they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and be converted, and I should heal them. Healing is on the other side of conversion. Conversion is the changing of your mind, changing of your ways. Amen? Uh, repentance, excuse me, repentance is change your mind, conversion is change your ways. All right. In them he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end. There is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Isn't that something? Oh my goodness, the sun penetrates. The, the law of the Lord is perfect. It penetrates. L listen to this now. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of God is perfect. The law of God, um, as for God, his ways are perfect. Jesus said, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Listen, the law of the Lord is perfect. Why do we need a law? What is the law for? The Lord said to Adam, you're not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God doesn't want good and evil in any of us. He wants good, amen? We stand against evil. And, and so he said, in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Adam died that day. And the scripture says, in Adam, we all died. And, and in, uh, in dying, we died in the spirit. We died to God. Our relationship with God was cut off. And so, and so, um, when the, the Bible says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not one of his. So, but when the spirit of Christ comes in and we're born again, that spirit that 
comes to do the, light, the, the will of God, that delights to do the will of God, comes to live on the inside of us. We have a change of heart. There's a change on the inside. Whereas before I was a rebel and wanted to run and do my own thing, all of a sudden I desire to please God. I want to be pleasing rather than, rather than um, rebellious and, uh, and having my own way. And what we used to love, now we hate. And what we used to hate, now we love. God brings a total change on the inside. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Before, before um, Jesus came, God gave us, here's what I love. Here's the way society is, ought, ought, ought to work. And he gives us his law, which shows the way creation ought to work. The Bible, Paul says this, he says, the end of the law. The summation of the law is love out of a pure heart and faith unfeigned. And, and, um, and so he says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What is the soul? It's the mind, will, and emotions. Just briefly, the mind, the will, and the, and the emotions. And so, and so um, the Lord wants our soul converted. I found when God began working in me, when I was 25 years old and I got saved and I started to read the Bible, I found that if I was going to be a Christian and I was going to be pleasing to God, then, then if I was going to be able to walk with God, and, this, and the scripture says, can two walk together except they agree? Uh, I found my soul didn't agree with a whole lot of things that God, that, that God uh, approved of. My soul approved of, of, of um, its own pleasure, its own ease, its own comfort. And so, but God wanted my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions converted. He wanted the, a change to come in my ways. And, and my emotions used to carry me into many things. But I found when I started to read the Word of God, I couldn't trust my emotions anymore. I couldn't listen to my emotions anymore. In fact, I found I had to tell my emotions what they were going to do. When my heart was breaking, I, I, I don't uh, talk to myself and say, talk to the hand, talk to the hand. God is going to heal you. And so just hold on. And, and I had to deal with myself. I had to learn a different way of thinking. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the way I think. The, um, Paul writes in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he said, I beg you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that, that you uh, present your body a living sacrifice. Because if you're going to serve God, you're going to serve God in this body. And in this body, you're going to be acceptable or not acceptable. Amen? And so he says, he says, can present your body a living sacrifice holy so there's a way you present your yourself to God you don't just bring old any old thing the Bible says that that Cain's um, sacrifice was not accepted but Abel's was and Cain was mad because his sacrifice he, he figured what's the matter with mine it's okay but God rejected his and God accepted Abel's sacrifice He's, and the Lord says, I want you to present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual form of worship. God made us to worship him. You become like what you worship. And God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he gives us truth in his word. And so as we come to his word, he's, he says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be being transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. So you can prove out in your own life, what's, here's the will of God, it's good. How, you know, I didn't used to walk this way, but he gave me boundaries and now I walk in these boundaries and I walk in a place that it's good. It's not bad anymore, it's good. And, and, I, and, and like Zig Ziglar said, do it, do it bad till you could do it better. And so it's good, but it's gonna get better. It's gonna get pleasing and it's gonna get the perfect will of God. I'm gonna learn how to do it. I'm gonna not, not just read it in the book, but it's gonna, it's gonna get walked out in shoe leather in my life. I'm gonna find out how to do it because he 
wants me to grow up into him in all things and for me to be conformed to the image of his son. And, and who is his son? He is the express image of God. And what did God call me whenever he gave me the authority? When, when I received Christ, he gave me the authority for me to become a son of God. And so I'm in the process of becoming. And, I, and, and I'm becoming what I eat. Amen. And man doesn't live by bread alone, but he lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we take the word of God. And the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Okay, that was, that was Old Testament. The problem in the Old Testament the people had, they didn't have the spirit. They didn't, they didn't have the spirit. And you say, well, that doesn't apply today. Well, well, can I just give you a verse? Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, uh, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did in sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the, so that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. God wants. He, he wants us walking after what His Word says. And it, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. Here's the way you live together. The end of the law, the summation of the law, is love out of a pure heart and faith that isn't fake. There's a lot of people, like, like the song goes, people walking up to you, shouting glory, hallelujah, and then they try to sock it to you in the name of the Lord. And that's, not, that's, not what we're, that's not what God wants, and that's not what we want. We, you, you hate to hear stories of, of, of the uh, Christian leader who fell. That's, that's terrible, you know. We don't want that. We, we want people to walk in such a way that that their example, Paul said, what you've seen and heard and learned and received in me, do that and the God of peace will be with you. He said, follow me, I follow Christ. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus walked in front of his, of his disciples. Jesus asked us to, to, to do the same thing. We're here to go and make disciples. We're to teach them how to walk, how to think, how to talk, how to do life. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. He says, um, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You want to find out how life works and what's right and what, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable? The, law, the testimony of the Lord, what does God have to say about it? It's sure. You know, the truth of the Lord endures to every generation. What was against the law when I was a boy, it's against the law to be against that now. Hmm. And so, and so the course of the whole nation has changed. What the, 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 um, the scripture says, he frames sin by a law. And they use the law to change the law. And so the, the law now says something different. But you know what? The law of the Lord is perfect. And, and, uh, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. The truth of the Lord endures to every generation. And so he says, the testimony of the Lord, what God has to say, his testimony. He said, it's sure. It's sure. You don't have to worry about it. You get this one, you got the right one. You got the thing to base your life on. You know where to stand and you, where, you know what, where not to stand. You know what to believe in and you know what to reject. And I, and, uh, and, and I don't care what political correctness says. You, when you have the word of God, you know exactly where you stand. Because heaven and earth are going to pass away. But not one jot or one tittle of my word will pass away until all is fulfilled. And, and and you, and you know what we're having? We're having an open book con, uh, test right now. Amen? Yeah, if we take the book and we find out what God has to say, then we find out how we should think and how we should live. Not which way is the wind blowing and, what, and what do the pol what's politically correct. Amen? Nah, that's why the scripture gives us the three Hebrew children. Everybody else was bowing down, but they stood up. Why? Because that was politically correct to bow down. You know, you could save your skin if you bowed down. But they stood up and stood out. Daniel, Daniel uh, decided, uh, he, he, he prayed. His custom was pray three times a day. But whenever the king had signed the writing that says, if anyone prays to any other God besides you, king, he'll be thrown into the 
into the den of lions, Daniel went to his, his room as was his custom, and three times a day he opened his windows towards Jerusalem and he prayed to the God of heaven, which caused him to be thrown into the den of lions. Hmm. You know, some people bow down and blend in, but, but not the real ones, and that's what God's looking for. Can I stand up? and stand out for him in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation because it's because that's um that's not um, because they want me to be politically correct. In other words, they want to make me. They want me to conform to their image. But the Lord said, don't be conformed to this world, but be being transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is what's acceptable. What's the good will of God? Where does God want you to stand? You may find that uh, you don't have strength, but go, go seek God. Amen. Go seek God and get the strength that you need so that you can, you can stand. Jesus said you'll receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be witnesses unto me. You know what the word witness is? Marturo. That's the Greek word. We get our word martyr from it. You, if, you want, if you want the ability to die to you so you can live to him, you want the ability to die to the things around you so you can live for him, Get filled up with the Spirit of God. Amen.